It's possible I've been wrong for a few years, and this might be the best sewing machine ever made. Hello, sewing people of the internet. In this video, I'm going to give you kind of my first impressions of my latest sewing machine acquisition. Uh, I say kind of because I've spent a little bit of time with the machine now. I really wish I would have had a camera set up the first time I ever did anything with it because uh, I think my brain fell out of my head. But I'm going to show you a bit about this machine. I am not an expert on this machine. I was aware of its existence, but didn't really know much about it until I had the opportunity to get one. And I actually ended up with three of these, but this is the only one that actually works perfectly. I have another one that works fairly well, uh, and another one that's just parts. Just a quick disclaimer, if you're new to my channel, uh, there's going to be a lot of talking in this video. If that's not your bag, then no worries. There's plenty of other videos out there. Um, but this is a, a video where I'm going to talk about what I think about this machine. If you're not familiar with my channel and my thoughts on sewing machines, the backstory is for domestic machines, I generally have a preference for machines built from 1970 or so and previous. I'm not a fan of new machines. And machines built in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, you know, to me, seem to kind of just progressively get worse through that time period. Just my opinion, and based on the kind of sewing that I do, you may have a completely different opinion, and, and you may have different sewing needs than I do. But that's just kind of how I roll. This machine uh, is at least an exception to what I just said, uh, or may just prove me completely wrong. So this is a Bernina Record 930, uh, as you probably already knew from the title of the video, and overall this is a feature-rich and incredibly well-designed and well-built machine, but there's one feature about this machine that just absolutely blew me away, uh, and I'll save that for later. Some of you probably already suspect or know what it is. So this machine has a lot of features that aren't particularly useful to me and the kind of sewing that I like to do. Uh, I tend to make, you know, utility items, backpacks, messenger bags, that kind of thing, uh, and I lean towards walking foot sewing machines. This has a lot of decorative stitches that aren't particularly useful to me. Hi, buddy. But when I first started checking the machine out, I was just absolutely astonished by how nicely I was absolutely astonished by how nicely put together and well designed it is. I came to this machine because my wife went to the eye doctor uh, and one of the employees there knew that she sewed and mentioned having these sewing machines that belonged to his grandmother uh, and, and was wondering what to do with them. She suggested that he call me. I don't know why she did that uh, because I knew exactly what to do. Give him a bunch of money for them. Uh, so, as I said, I ended up with three of these and a record 830, the model previous to this one. Um, that might make it into another video at some point. I really didn't know much about these machines and still don't. Uh, my understanding is the record 930 was produced sometime between 1981 and 1985, I believe. So, it's an early 80s machine. Uh, it does have some nylon gears, uh, maybe two at least, in it. Um, but it's a, it's a metal case, even the top is metal. Um, it, like I said, it's a really well-built, uh, well-designed machine. Berninas are Swiss, and you can tell when you look inside this thing. Right? This uh, particular machine came with the manual, uh, which is pretty comprehensive. Um, the one thing I noticed is it's pretty short on uh, minor repair things. It's just see your Bernina dealer for everything. Uh, one thing I thought was kind of funny, even the Swiss weren't above some funny typos uh, in the description of the carrying case, which is really well designed by the way. Uh, it says the specious carrying case. 
which is kind of funny. They meant spacious, obviously. But Continuing with the well-designed theme, this accessory box has uh, feet and some other stuff. I don't even know what some of this stuff is. Uh, and I don't think this is a complete set, but uh, has quite a bit and space for bobbins on the front there. And latches nicely and fits into the carrying case really well. It's pretty cool. And as you've already seen, this machine is a free arm machine with this removable table so that it can uh, act as a flatbed. And that's really nicely done. You can see that this machine has been used quite a bit. So talking about the machine being well designed, uh, one of the things that jumped out at me immediately, this really made me giggle a little bit when I first touched it, is the foot lift lever on the back. It's this really nice wide, and just really nicely made lever. I mean, it's just far better than the stick that sticks off the back of most sewing machines. That's a detail that I don't think a lot of machine manufacturers may think is important, but then when you handle this, it just, it's nice. Another feature I found really nice is the door for the bobbin winder. It opens nice and smoothly, and you can see the bobbin winding mechanism retracting when you close the door. And I'll show you one other thing about this when I wind a bobbin on it. This table would be an awesome place for a so hard sticker. I'm not going to put it on this table though because I'm not sure I'm going to keep this machine. But if you want a sticker like this, there's a link in the description and a Teespring shelf below where you can buy one. When you are ready to wind a bobbin, as you push the bobbin onto the post, it locks or it pushes down to lock into position. And when it does, it also disconnects the sewing mechanism. So instead of having to uh, loosen the clutch on the end of the machine, it does it automatically. The bobbins for this machine are very similar in size to a class 15 bobbin, but I think they're slightly different. It looks like you're probably not going to see this very well, but the class 15 is just a tiny bit taller. The machine's quite easy to thread. Um, there's a guide on the back side, and then it runs through this channel and under this guy and just loops around that. You don't have to go through a hole. This little wire guide here is the one that kind of surprises me. Every other guide on the machine you can just loop behind. You don't have to, you know, put the thread through a, it's not a hole, but it's just, it's a little fiddly. That lever, man. And the machine also has a very nice uh, quick release for the feet. I'm going to show you how the machine sews. I'm barely going to scratch the surface of what this machine's capabilities are. There's a ton of stuff that I don't even know how to do and, and have no use for, but you'll at least see how it functions. So this machine has a particular foot pedal. Uh, when you sew, it will stop in the needle up position. If you place it in the needle down position and then step on the back of the foot pedal, it raises the needle automatically. There's a very convenient uh, thread cutter here on the bed of the machine, this little disc.
This is one of the craziest things I found that this machine can do. Um, again, not something I really do a lot of, but for basting, uh, say, a piece of clothing or whatever, when you want to baste it together really loosely to see if it fits so you can easily take it apart again. Uh, with this knob turned to this position, it does this. So it stitches like every fourth stitch. So you can base something together and very easily take it apart when you're ready to. One thing I want to point out, this is not a negative about this machine necessarily, but I get a lot of questions about sewing inner tubes. And, you know, I have several walking foot sewing machines, so for me I just use a walking foot sewing machine and it's a no-brainer. Uh, this is probably as capable of a sewing machine as I've ever encountered. And this is one layer of bicycle inner tube, not particularly thick. Does pretty good on one layer. Let's try two layers, which is kind of the minimum you would be sewing together. So, in its stock configuration without doing anything to help it, that doesn't work well at all. I think the friction of the inner tube on the bottom of the foot uh, makes it not feed very smoothly when there's two layers. And I'm offering that just as another indication that if this is the kind of stuff that you want to work with, you probably want a walking foot machine. Okay, so I saved the most mind-blowing feature of this machine for last. If you had asked me before I learned about this machine, I would have told you that this does not exist in any domestic sewing machine. This machine has a knee lift for the presser foot. A knee lift is one of the most useful features of industrial machines. I had no idea that there was a domestic machine on the market ever that had one. And if you know of other ones, please post in the comment section below. Absolutely blows my mind that this is available. So that's just a brief overview of this machine. Um, I don't know that I will ever have much more to offer than that. There are probably many videos about these machines uh, on YouTube that will give you more information. So if this is your first exposure to this machine and you want to know more, definitely search those out. Um, the 830 I have, by the way, uh, also has the knee lever, but uh, it doesn't have the electronic foot control to automatically needle down and needle up. So, a little bit different there. So, given my preference for older machines and industrial machines and walking foot machines, what am I going to do with this machine? That's kind of an interesting question for me because, honestly, I could probably get rid of every other domestic machine that I have and just keep this one. I think I could work faster with it than with some of my other machines because of the knee lever and because of the automatic uh, needle down feature and stuff. Uh, however, I don't think I'm going to end up keeping these machines long term. Before you make comments that you want to buy these machines from me, uh, that may be a possibility in the relative near future. Sorry. That may be a possibility in the relatively near future, but this machine, in its case, is very big and very heavy. It will probably cost a fortune to ship. So if you don't live in southwest Florida, 
you know, I don't know that that's going to be a, a real possibility. If you live in Southwest Florida and you're interested, leave a comment and let me know. This machine is seriously maybe the nicest sewing machine I've ever seen. Uh, I'm absolutely blown away by how good it is. But it does a lot of things that I don't need, and those things are just more things that may eventually go wrong with it. I mean, this is early 1980s electronics, uh, so, you know, I'm sure that eventually things may fail, and, you know, I generally need straight stitch and zigzag at the most, and generally prefer a walking foot machine, so... Um, I'm, I'm glad I've had the opportunity to get to know this machine a little bit, and I'll probably use it some, and maybe I won't sell it, but... I don't think it's the perfect fit for me. If your sewing involves uh, more typical apparel fabrics, household fabrics, lighter weight stuff, if you're interested in decorative stitching, embroidery, um, you know, mending clothing, you know, that kind of thing, if you can get one of these, this really is an amazing piece of work. Hi, you're an amazing piece of work. Don't you know that? If you have questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. If you're not a subscriber, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you didn't already know that I had this machine. Uh, but if you do follow me on Instagram, then you'll get sneak peeks of upcoming things and see other things that might or might not be interesting to you. Uh, as of right now, I've got uh, just under a thousand followers. So I'm really trying to get over a thousand because I think I get a free toaster when I hit a thousand or something. <laughs> There's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you were, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I should have said that louder. SMH Green Stamp. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say that too loud. That really dates us. <laughs> if you want to help support me while I continue to ramble because I don't know my own spiel. That sounded terrible, didn't it, buddy? That didn't sound good at all, did it?